This is The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for joining us this morning. We'll be joined by Professor Ken Ohozilo, uh, Professor of Surgery and uh, Constant Trauma Surgeon, University of Jaws, uh, right there, Teaching Hospital. Immediate past uh, president, Medical and Dental Consultant Association of Nigeria. Uh, we were looking at the issue with uh, the medical student. Yes, indeed, Mercy. Uh, um, the, the medical students have been in, embroiled in a, in, a, in a situation with the Medical Council uh, of Nigeria. Not just medical students, but medical graduates uh, from the nation of Ukraine that has been embroiled in the, in the war. We told that the fate of some returnee Nigerian medical students from Ukrainian universities, it hangs in the balance. I don't know if it's still in the balance or if it's finally fallen off that balance. Um, but this is following the refusal of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria to allow them to sit for exams. We're well aware of what has been happening in Ukraine with the, um, uh, with the war uh, on Ukraine by Russia or the Russia-Ukraine war, whichever way you want to look at it. But their education in that country came to a halt following that uh, invasion or that attack whichever side you're on, on February 24 by Russian soldiers, which led to you know, a halt in activities in Ukraine. The plight of Nigerian students well uh, documented. A lot of Nigerian students in different parts of Ukraine, even in Crimea. You know, I knew someone in Crimea back in the day when the Crimean crisis started. Uh, over 1,500 Nigerian students uh, were displaced, with the majority of them being final year medical students. And with all that's happening in the education sector in the country, you will uh, not blame Nigerian students for making their way to different countries. You have Nigerian students in Cyprus, for instance, where they don't speak English. In Ukraine, where they don't speak English. In, in other parts of the world. Um, so, you know, the Nigerian medical, final year medical students preparing uh, to graduate in June. They were preparing to graduate in June before the war broke out in February. Um, one of the graduates, Bede Zero, had become troubled. Uh, despite his plan to return to Nigeria uh, to practice, he disclosed that he and other colleagues had their hearts in their mouths um, before leaving Ukraine as they scampered for safety. Um, but when, when they got back to the country, they were told um, by the authorities in, in the country, Nigeria, that they're not able uh, to... Uh, you know, to sit for their medical exams. And that is the, the main issue. Um, the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria is the regulatory body uh, and the licensing body for all medical and dental experts. You have to be licensed by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria for you to practice uh, medicine in the country. Um, that Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, the MDC, and organizes exams twice a year um, to determine qualified candidates to be grafted into the Nigerian healthcare system. Now, the exam dictates that if a graduate of medicine or dentistry will be uh, licensed in Nigeria, you must go through that exam. Whether you, you study anywhere in the world, you must go through uh, that exam. Now, on, on June 18, 2022, the Medical and Dental Council noted in the statement that it will not honor uh, the medical and dental degree certificates issued by medical schools in Ukraine uh, from 2022 until when normal academic activities resume. So that is the problem. That is the problem we're facing, the students are facing and complaining uh, about right now. Mercy. But we do also have our professor joining. We'll just go straight to the crux of the matter because uh, it's already been stated that uh, uh, students are not being allowed to write the examination one week after. I mean, it's just like one week period that they missed. And uh, on the 18th of uh, June, uh, 2022, the association had already stated its position as regards those who uh, did not meet the criteria. Of course, uh, there are a lot of tags saying that these students have been tagged as online students or uh, those who studied online. But we have a professor joining the conversation this morning. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. So let's share your thoughts on the situation. What do you make of this? Uh, on the one hand, students are not being allowed to sit for the examination. And uh, on the other side, I mean, looking at the condition that, is, that happened, that you know, led them to this point and the stand of the association. Yes, uh, like I said, um, thank you for having me. Um, I think that 
it's uh, unfortunate that this situation has um, arisen. I share in the plight of the students. I think that um, everybody knows that the unfortunate situation in Ukraine is something that was unforeseen and um, is something that has disrupted not just the education of these um, young Nigerians, but uh, in many ways the whole world, including economics and food crisis and all whatnot. So it's a major, major um, disruption in the whole order of the, you know, the world presently. Now, having said that, the, the the situation must be looked at from the point of view that it is not anybody's fault particularly. It is neither the fault of the students nor the fault of the uh, Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. I think that to understand this situation, we need to know that the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria operates within regulations. And these regulations apply even for medical schools in Nigeria. Now, the certificates obtained from Ukraine are recognized in Nigeria. But that recognition is predicated on a certain curriculum. Okay? So that curriculum is what confers completeness of training. So from the point of view of MDCN, as a regulatory body, any detraction from the completeness of that training makes it cost, if not impossible, to recognize that certificate. If that certificate, therefore, falls short of recognition, then you would understand why they are not able to allow them seats for the exams to license them. I don't know if we are following so far. Well, but um, one of the issues that's been raised by the Nigerian Medical Association is that there were reported online teachings of medical students and was not acceptable anywhere in the world. Let's even look at it. Are we saying that online teachings are not, uh, you know, okay? Because there are a lot of people who are being schooled online, there are several institutions, even in Nigeria. I don't even want yeah. to go into mentioning some of those institutions where persons cannot converge at the center, at the central point, but take classes online and get to write the examination. This is not, you know, a discrimination. And the students involved here, we're talking about just the one week duration before the war. Yes. Yes, I totally understand what you're saying, you know, and um, it's, 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 it's hard not to feel for them. Okay, but if you want to understand the uh, difficult role that the MDCN plays, medicine is like, is unlike many other courses in the sense that um, it's an issue of um, literally life and death. Okay, within Nigeria here, the, the, the curriculum of medical education is tightly regulated. Any shortcoming is unaccepted. And the curriculum is not fixed unilaterally. Okay? So a school cannot just wake up and say, okay, we're changing our curriculum to be this and this. That new change has to be subjected to the accreditation procedures of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria and also the National University Commission. And when it is accepted, then it becomes the norm and, you know, makes the products of such schools eligible. Now, the problem with the online schooling is not that um, it is not acceptable or that it's not practiced elsewhere in the world. It is. And uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has proven to us that there's a lot that we can achieve by embracing this um, mode of education. But it was not part of the curriculum before the war then it falls short of that which was recognized. This is the position that MDCN is. 
Okay, so you cannot say, okay, for instance, in Nigeria now, there's currently an art strike. So you cannot say in the absence of strike, you can move to a different mode and use it to compensate, to make up for lost time. It doesn't fly. That is the position that MBCN is, and that is what the students need to recognize. Having said this, I think that there's an opportunity for um, the students or graduates now, call them, to interface with the MBCN to define what is it that can be done at this point to remediate the shortcoming they have suffered on account of the war. That can be done in Nigeria here or elsewhere. But once that is defined, you will not have a path to go because I don't support myself leaving them hanging due to um, a situation that is no fault of theirs, you know, a situation in which they are equally victims. All right? So I think that a way forward has to be found. That can only be found in consultation and negotiation with the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, following the extant rules and regulation governing medical licensure in Nigeria. Uh, uh, Doc, the, the, some of the students, Ukrainian returnee students, have um, also said that uh, there, there's a history of um, victimization of, of, of students who study abroad in the country uh, from Nigeria, especially in Ukraine, because this were the experiences. And they're saying that um, even though they, their predecessors have gone through the Ukrainian education system, uh, the medical schools there and all that. When they come back to Nigeria, they're not allowed to proceed straight to get the license. They are made to undergo a one-year compulsory internship, and they are pointing to that as uh, evidence of uh, their unfair treatment by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. W what do you say to that? Yeah, D Doc, can you hear me, please? All right, we, we seem to have a, a frozen uh, uh, network connection, but um, it's, it's a quite uh, an interesting one. I think it's important we have our guest tonight, uh, this morning, because well, like, he's a former chairman of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. Oh. Yeah, Doc, are you back? Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm saying that some of these Ukrainian students uh, or, you know, returnee student, Nigerian students from Ukraine who have been complaining are saying that um, their predecessors, those who were ahead of them each time they come back to Nigeria, they're not allowed to get a license immediately. They're made to undergo a one-year compulsory internship before um, being given opportunity to get to become licensed. And they're pointing to that as evidence of their unfair treatment by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria simply because they studied abroad. Um, so they feel it's been taken out on them. W what do you say to that? Okay. Uh, I mean, th this, this is pointing to maybe they're, they're, they're trying to insinuate that they're being treated unfairly compared to their uh, counterparts, their, their fellow countrymen who are, are schooled in or who study in, in Nigeria. Messi, I remember from my childhood. Uh, uh, doctor, are you there, please? Prof, are you there, yes, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I all right. I can hear you. I, yeah, so, okay. Prof, did you get the question, please? Yeah, are you uh, talking about um, some kind of... Uh, the one-year compulsory internship, yes, which is Ukrainian students are made to undergo when they return to the country. And they're saying it's unfair, and that is evidence of their unfair treatment by the MC, MDCN. Okay, well, um, uh, I think it is more an issue of perception. It may not be entirely wrong, but I want to speak from my own personal experience because I've, um, I've had a, lot, a number of the uh, students that are graduates rather from uh, Ukrainian institutions. And what I, what, I, what I perceive is that, you know, there's a difference in training, which is entirely understandable, okay? Um, their mode of instruction is not exactly the same as um, our mode of instruction here. These patterns are not exactly the same. And um, the, the, the emphasis, you know, in terms of um, training, there are differences, okay? And so what you find out is that um, in the past, when some of them come back to practice in Nigeria, there are some observed deficiencies, which I, I don't think 
uh, should be interpreted to mean that they are not properly trained. They are. And it can also not be interpreted to mean that they're not um, good enough because some of them have gone on to be very, very excellent and fantastic doctors. Okay, so I think that it is on the basis of some of these deficiencies that um, led to a situation where um, there were a provision was made for some postings. You know, they spent some time in some Nigerian teaching hospitals and all that to acquire some you know skills that may not have been a part of their, their their training and also to get to understand the peculiarities of the nigerian practice and disease pattern and approach to therapy you know after which many of them go on to do very well so i um, if there's that kind of perception i don't think it's uh, warranted that kind of negative perception because like i said um a, a lot of them have gone on to be very very fantastic doctors and also let us know that you know even their training abroad is not due to any fault of theirs it's not really that uh they are not qualified to study medicine in nigeria the reason why they didn't study medicine in nigeria is because there was no space okay uh, but they are adequately qualified all right so i think that they are actually filling a very very essential manpower gap you know, because every country is trying to see how it can increase its uh, number of doctors. And I, I feel that the number we're producing here in Nigeria is not adequate. And if we have the benefit of this um, foreign trained medical graduates boost up our system, I think it's entirely something we should embrace. All right. Uh, uh, interesting, very interesting having you on the program this morning, Professor but, Ken Ozoino. But, but just before we go, Kofi, quick one here, uh, because it's still part of the discourse, Professor. The Nigerian Association, uh, Medical Association, is saying that the persistent brain drain by doctors is depleting the country's medical care experts and taking the country further away from recommended number of doctors. And so uh, we have been reduced to... Uh, the ratio, patient uh, doctor ratio, one is to 600, from one is to 600 to one is to 5,000. And that's because we have less hands. We'd like you to share your thoughts on that. Well, um, what NMA is saying is totally true. Uh, in the past two, three years, I myself have been shouting myself hoarse, you know, um, trying to draw attention um, not just the government, but the entire country, the ordinary Nigerian, the citizenship, we have a massive problem of brain drain in the health sector, and not just doctors, but nurses. And I'm hearing recently now, um, including other fields, uh, information, communication, technology, and all that. Okay, it's a huge problem because we work in the hospitals, we wear the shoes, we see our colleagues living every day. Um, there is no week that I don't have requests from my doctor for a reference letter for a foreign job. You know, usually in the UK, America, and sometimes um, uh, the Middle East. Now, in my perception, the major driver is, is, is economic, okay, because the, the remuneration these people are offered is massive and in foreign exchange, you know, and I don't see um, our system competing favorably, you know. But I think the major, major issue here is that judging from the utterances of uh, government officials, it does not appear to have been recognized as a problem in government circles. And this is truly unfortunate because you cannot begin to advance a solution to a problem that has not been identified or accepted as a group. And so I think that if the time comes where we truly recognize that we have a problem, then we can begin to ask questions and profile solutions. But as for the brain drain phenomenon, it is going on and it is very massive, the health sector. All right, Prof, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you on the program this morning and uh, a fantastic analysis from you. I always look forward to having someone of your caliber on the program in the future. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. Right, all right, and uh, that's the size of our package. It's been quite an interesting one. Um, uh, of course, interesting analysis. Um, Mercy? Well, if you missed out on any part of it, it's okay to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You have all of the contents been uh, uploaded there for your uh, pleasure. Uh, my name is Messi Popo. Do you have a fantastic day? And my name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning.